Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know If I, let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Even if the sky is falling down Hey guys, what's up? Um, welcome back to my little space of the internet. Um, for those of you guys who don't know me, I'm Nicole Eva and I am a blogger and creator and I basically utilize this internet space to talk about mental wellness, personal development, and just a little bit of everything else. So I'm just wicked excited about today, well this month mainly just because it's like October, it's finally like fall, fall, like officially autumn, and with autumn being my favorite season, there's just so much happening, so much that hasn't happened quickly because autumn for New England at least lasts about like three weeks. So I don't know, I'm just really excited about it, excited about this month and everything that's changing and moving and developing for this month. I think one of the biggest reasons why I really love autumn specifically is because everything's changing constantly. It just like reminds me like with the weather changing, the leaves changing, um, just everything changing just kind of reminds me that, you know, we're not in control and seasons come and seasons go and there's beauty in all of it, not to get super deep and poetic right off the bat, but that's just like, I don't know, just fall just means so much to me and I just, I just love it. There's like so much symbolism and just poetry in the season. So I'm pumped about it. I'm happy to just, ugh, we're in October. I've got like my fall candles up. I've got fall decorations up, not a ton because new apartment, like, you know, budgets and all of that, but like, it looks pretty like, Pretty cute, smells great, you can't smell it, but all these little fall candles. And I even have my like cinnamon spice tea, which is so good. And don't you just like love the way tea just feels in a cup? Like I always try to get Kev to like hold my mugs when they're full of like hot tea and be like, babe, like feel it. It just feels so comforting. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Anyways, um, I'm just like really excited. But anyways, today, um, I just wanted to talk with you guys real quick because I just actually finished up a blog post. I just published it and I wanted to share a little bit about it with you guys. A little bit, a little bit of it with you guys. I don't know what I just said, but I want to share it with you guys. And we're basically talking about self-care when you don't care. Um, 
And so I've talked about a lot, if you guys have been here on like my Instagram or on my blog or just been on my YouTube for a while, you guys know that I talk a lot about self-care and that I kind of, I have nothing against self-care of like, you know, face masks, sitting in the bathtub, like bubbles up to your chin and like, you know, like that type of self-care. Like I have nothing against that. I think that's really good, beneficial, helps you to feel alive, helps you to feel special, taken care of and all of that stuff. It's good to feel pampered every once in a while. But I do think that sometimes that's the self-care we focus on and that can cheapen the entire thing. It can cheapen the self-care goal. It kind of has become an industry, it's become like capitalized on and like, you know, people will be like, oh, face mask, hashtag self-care. Like, yeah, I guess, but I feel like there's more to that. And um, I basically just wanted to address like self-care when you just don't care. Um, so for those moments where like you're having, I don't know, like maybe, maybe like a major depressive episode, you just can't get out of bed, you like, you can barely even convince yourself to like take a shower and eat food. Like on those days, a bubble bath and a peach scented face mask are not going to cut it. Um, I just want to talk about what self care looks like on those days and what we can do on those days. Like I have those days where I just want to sleep for the entire month and it's not helpful. But, you know, that's just how I feel in those moments. So I just want to address that real quick with you guys and talk with some strategies of how to like care for yourself when you just don't feel like caring for yourself. Disclaimer, I'm not a therapist. I am not in any way like certified self-care coach or whatever. Um, but I just, I have some experience in these areas and I think we don't talk about it enough. So I want to talk about it. It's that simple. So I think the first strategy that I find works best for me, um, when I'm in the middle of one of those funks is to nourish myself. Um, and that, you know, like when you're in those moments, I don't know. Okay. Personally, when I'm in one of those moments, I just like don't want to eat, right? Like I just don't feel like eating. I don't, I have no desire to make food. I don't want to do anything. Um, especially not anything that like helps to like benefit myself. Cause I'm just, I'm not, you know, um, but it's really helpful to get something in your system. So you guys know the term hangry It's not a made up term. I mean like it is, but like it has scientific backing as in like your physical body and your brain reacts to not being nourished enough, not having enough nutrition, not having enough protein, you name it. Like when you don't have enough of something, your body reacts. So I know for me, if I'm already in a funk, and I'm, on top of that, I'm hungry and my blood sugar is low and I haven't had anything to eat like all day. I'm not going to get better. Like my brain is not going to get better. I'm not going to suddenly be like, oh my gosh, logical thinking. Like this is why I'm feeling the way I am. No, actually the smallest thing is going to happen. I'm going to be even more set off, even more triggered by that really, really, really tiny thing simply because I didn't eat right. Um, so what do I eat? Sometimes I just start my day with a bowl of oatmeal. It's easy, it's nutritious. I don't have to like turn on the stove. I don't have to do anything super complicated with that. Um, and sometimes that's just enough to give my body sustenance to tell me either this is why you're frustrated or I need more of this, meaning food, water, whatever it is. It just kind of jump starts your body to start feeling better. Um, so that's the first step, like nourish yourself, nourish your body, get something in your system. Even if it's like a banana or like orange juice or whatever it is, just get something in your system to start off. Okay. Like we're trying to like not sabotage your already bad state of mind. Um, the second thing I would do, um, second strategy for self care when you just don't care is to connect, um, and connect with people. So it's really easy to sit in bed and just scroll through Instagram, to scroll through Facebook and just like, you know, you're connecting, but you're really not. You're not talking to anybody. You're not actually communicating. No one actually knows what you're going through right now. Um, I actually do that when I'm trying to disconnect. It feels like connection, but it's really, it's not. Um, so what I'll do is maybe send a text to a friend or wait for, you know, I'm going to be hit up by one of my friends. So when they hit me up and be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Like, what's going on? Let's go hang out. That's when I'll usually reach out and be like, hey kind of having a rough day and it's awkward because like I think sometimes we feel like telling someone you're having a bad day is burdensome like you're putting a burden on them or like you're 
asking for sympathy or asking for pity or asking for attention or whatever it feels like it is. Um, but I think those are really important just to, it's just important just to do it to let someone know that you're struggling. Also because, I don't know about you guys, but like when I'm in one of those stages, I guess, I feel super isolated. I feel alone. I feel like no one cares. I feel like no one sees me. I feel like I'm just in my own little space and I could be surrounded by people. I'm still going to feel alone and isolated and just on my own. So when I go out of my way to say, hi, here's how I'm feeling. And that's it. Like super simple. Um, it helps me to feel seen and I'm kind of easier. It's easier for me to like eliminate that lie in my head to like, you're by yourself, no one cares. Because now you have people who are reaching out to you. Now you have someone who knows, who at least sees you, like who can maybe bring you a cup of tea or just like, you know, send you some encouraging words or send you some funny things on TikTok or whatever it is. But like there's a connection happening. So I think that's my second one is just connect. And it's really simple. You don't have to like go on a whole paragraph and say, this is how I'm feeling. Like you, no one's really asking you to put yourself out there like that. I've sent a text that just says, today is hard. Three words, today is hard. And I mean, if you send it to the right friend, you have the right person, they're not really gonna ask you to explain your entire life to them and be like, oh, thank you for letting me know. And maybe some encouraging words will come forth or you simply know that somebody else knows you're struggling. So number two, connect with somebody. Um, and I think my third strategy for kind of caring for yourself when you don't feel like caring for yourself would be to get up and move, move your body. This is my least favorite one, but it's the most effective one. Actually, no, they're all really effective, but this is definitely an effective one that I like to skip because I don't want to do it. I want to be in bed all day. don't want to do anything. don't want to shower. don't want to get out of my clothes. don't want to do any of that. Um, but it's important. So that usually for me means I'm going to get up. I'm going to shower. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to change my clothes and I'm going to switch my environment. Whether that means I simply go from the bedroom to the living room and that's all I did for the day. Thumbs up. Did good. Sometimes I'm going to take a walk around my building. Sometimes I'm going to go to the gym and not work out, but I'm gonna walk on the treadmill for a while. Sometimes I'm gonna go with the same friend that I said I'm having a hard day and just go for a walk in the park or something. Um, I would even encourage like if the weather permits and all that is to be outside because the fresh air plus the body movement is a great, it's just a great combination for you to start feeling better. The endorphins will like, kick in and you'll just maybe find yourself feeling a little bit better if not a lot of bit better um usually after like those three things i start to feel more like myself i start to think logically and maybe like understand why i'm feeling the way i'm feeling my thoughts will start to be more positive and more constructive i'll start deciding to journal about something or start writing about something or actually start talking to a friend about why i'm feeling the way i'm feeling it's just kind of those little steps to start you on the right path to feeling better. Um, and I think we've got to remember that like self-care, the goal of it at, like, at its source is for you to start listening to yourself so that you know what you need. And then from knowing what you need, you can start taking steps to address what you need and I mean, all those moods and highs and lows, they all come from different things. They all have different triggers. They all have different uh, starting points. But in the end, once we start thinking healthily, you start being able to take those steps to actually care for yourself. And I think that's the foundation of self-care. That's what it actually means. That's what it's actually about. That's what it's for. Um, and then from that on, you can do the bubble bath or you can do the face mask and you can do the nails and uh, all of those fun things. But I think taking care of your mind and your emotions first and foremost that's the priority and then all the other stuff comes afterwards again nothing against all that stuff but i think you can take as many bubble baths in the world and then still wonder why you're still depressed or anxious um and it's because you're really putting a band-aid over a th over a solution if you're going to take a bubble bath but you're not going to eat what good is that you know so these are just my thoughts um if you want to read more about what i've written um you can head over to my blog I'll have it linked below in my description. Um, but yeah, 
I will be back around here to chat with you guys shortly. And in the meantime, enjoy your October, enjoy your fall, do some fun fall things. I'm excited to do some fun fall things like going to a corn maze or going apple picking or whatever else it is. Like I'm excited to get on board with all of that. So I hope you guys do too and I will see you next time. All right, bye.